So we've been investigating and researching consent within the context of universities, working with university students, specifically working with male identifying students and male athletes, looking at masculinity and male privilege. We've offered two workshops. We're working with rugby players, American football players, basketball players, there's also a boxer and somebody who plays handball. And they all come from various different perspectives. Thinking about um, their well-being um, and the way in which they function as a, as a unit too, um, in, a, in a multiplicity of ways with respect to sort of leadership um, and sort of maximising a potential. And that includes sort of emotional um, uh, maturity and stability and, and, and the, sort, the sorts of conversations that we're exploring in the workshop and the ways in which that that's, um, provides a sort of a good environment for a team to be able to sort of build on their success. So what I learned in the workshop was um, sort of sexism women faced and also um, it was quite interesting to learn about male suicide and how that's linked to the fact that um, men don't really open up or talk about their issues as much. Particularly how men are portrayed in the media and especially on social media, I thought that was very interesting. Uh, and how that can translate into men feeling inadequate as a result of this sort of extreme ways and hyper-masculinity that's shown in those um, domains. Identity is is a very interesting topic because anyone can connect to that but at the same time it's related to very broad um, power relations and uh, notions of inequality across society so it's really a way to to connect the intimate with the political the understanding of like privilege and uh, how people just have a an innate advantage without even understanding it and it's really fascinating we talked about the pronouns really early on. Uh, again, something I've never thought about, and I, I, it made me think straight away: Have I ever offended someone by using the wrong pronoun? And I've always assumed that everyone would assume that his, him, would be what him, his, him, he would be what I'm referred to as. Complex thing that if that's not how somebody is, perceives themselves, do you then also perceive them like that? It actually can be quite taboo to talk about the pressures that the patriarchy put on young men or on men. So to begin with in the workshops, um, it's not an easy conversation. We hadn't spoken about uh, mental health. We hadn't, we hadn't really discussed, um, you know, harassment or, or anything along those lines. I, I suppose we had in the, in the grand scheme of things. So it was just given the opportunity to do that with with a group of guys who you play, on, play with on a Wednesday and, and you spend a lot of time around is, was, was really nice actually. Following our period of research together, we brought on Gareth Eason, who's a sex educator who works for Taylor SRE, and also Alex Bomer, who um, is working within the history department and also is a physiotherapist. It was really exciting as us, as three female identifying people, to be working with two really woke men who have a lot of energy and a lot of passion about how you open up those conversations. From my perspective as such, I have worked um, kind of at the highest level of professional sport and at the very, very lowest level, and the issues remain the same throughout. And this kind of provided a really great opportunity such to engage and open a conversation with amateur young athletes so that actually we can kind of gather their thoughts now and almost kind of develop their kind of uh, beliefs as such going on into the future. This isn't necessarily about changing attitudes, it's and about enabling young men to voice their attitudes and to say them out loud and to realise that people agree with them and to realise that people are struggling with the same issues and then as a group to find practical ways to help each other. So through that process you have change. And the idea with masculinity was let's have men actually engage with these issues and let's have them engage but in ways that are not judgmental and that are not uh, binary. Let's try to, to hear what they have to say about masculinity. As a rugby team uh, at Kings, um, a lot of power to you know, change the wider view in Kings within males particularly. People sometimes in the past have looked at rugby teams and actually thought the way they treat women is pretty bad, to, to put it 
um, you know, lightly. And I think the power that we have, and maybe I have as, as captain, I, I suppose, is to, to level that playing field and, that, and actually, um, you know, I, I suppose eradicate what is is seems to be ingrained particularly in uni rugby and uni sport the plan is like between myself and the rest of the committee we'll pen together like a code of conduct that we'll send off to the rfu to be reviewed and have it also go to the su it'll be what you accept if you become a member of the rugby club especially like how the rugby club is both perceived by the rest of the university which i on could say is quite hostile because of the way boys have acted in the past like we're really trying to clamp down on that kind of that kind of negative culture rugby is a like it's a it's a great sport but it has a certain attitude that comes with it it's more about opening up these questions not all spaces can ever be safe but if you can create a space that is brave then you can start opening up those questions and really pushing to maybe challenge an assumption of power dynamics or oppression within certain spaces and definitely assumptions of, of gender characteristics or gender identity.